Ladies and gentlemen, guys and gals, hey, what's up? Welcome, Super Agents Live. I really appreciate you tuning in. Now, gosh, guys, I got to tell you, last week we took the week off for a couple reasons. One, it was the week of Thanksgiving. I was up in uh, my cabin up in Big Bear in Southern California here, uh, and I didn't upload anything. And it was it was part mistake, part deliberate. Um, our show notes writer, a guy named Luis, the guy's awesome, man, but he's behind. So I wanted to give him a little time to catch up, number one. Number two, um, to be honest with you, I started packing up. I was like, oh, let's just go, and I, I totally forgot. So I apologize if you guys missed anything. Uh, really quickly, if you don't know, the hashtag for the show is Unpack That Idea. It's a big follow train. Use it, and you will get followers. Um now, today's episode is, uh, I have literally done like 150 interviews, and today's episode is the beginning of something, and it's the beginning of something you will start to see, and maybe you've seen it in the past, I'm not sure, but, but literally, because I, I do my, I release my interviews kind of out of sync, or not kind of super out of sync. Uh, so today's episode is the first time I really ever asked somebody, I, I lead it off with these questions, I said, team size, transactions, volume. Holy smokes, man. Today's, today's guest, Chantel Ray. Now, I've actually, I know her husband. Oddly enough, they, they share a different last name. And I said, okay, hey, Chantel, team size. She's like 46. I'm like, 46? She said 46. I said, okay. I said, uh, transaction. She's like oh, 900. Oh, my God. I have been doing you guys a disservice for the whole last year. You have been listening to absolute 100% superstars, the top, top, top creme de la creme in the real estate industry. And you know what? I've blown it because I've not illustrated that to you. So today I, I'm actually uploading this a little bit late, so I didn't have a chance to go through it. I did this interview maybe a month ago. So um, I do remember enjoying it. Chantel is an a wonderful, lovely lady. So I know you're going to love it. So stick with it. Now, uh, we always have a sponsor. Now, today's sponsor is uh, sponsored by us, and and it's this. We want to talk about radio. We have this platform. If you are out there building a business and uh, you want to add 100 transactions to your deal flow, radio, terrestrial, AM, FM, radio advertising is the key. Now, look, it's not as expensive as you think. Um, a lot of people are out there spending like four grand on Boomtown. Guess what? You can have a radio uh, campaign for less than that um, in certain markets and other markets. It's crazy, right? So if you're interested in radio, if you want to grow your business, take it to truly the next level and get come list me calls, radio is the key. Go to the website, check out our Dominate with Radio tab. And while you're there, download my ebook, 52 page How to Sell. And uh, subscribe to the show if you haven't, for God's sake. So, all right, guys. Hey, let's get to it. I hope you enjoy it. Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. Yeah. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate yeah. entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. Today on the show, we have a pretty special guest. Uh, you know, everybody wants to build a team. This person on the show today has a mega team. They have, she has 51 team members. Last year, she did a staggering 900 transactions. I'm thrilled to welcome Chantel Ray. Hey, Chantel, thanks for taking the time out today. Thanks so much. So listen, I've given the audience a brief overview of just of your background, but maybe take a minute. Tell us a little bit about yourself. We want to get to know what, what Chantel is about, uh, and, then, and then talk to us a little bit about your business. So I used to be a teacher at Cox High School, and then I became a children's pastor after that. And then I just decided it was time for me to branch out, make some more money. And everyone said, hey, I think you'd be great at real estate. And so I did that. And I hired my first buyer's agent within the first month hmm. that I was in real estate. And I hired an assistant the first month I was in real estate. I wasn't even out of training. And I hired a buyer's agent because I knew that I hated working with buyers. It was just not my thing. I was not 
great. I don't, I don't like driving, so I'm not big on driving around in the car and taking people out. And so then it just everything kind of evolved from there. Well, so and, and when did you get into real estate? What year? Um, right. I, I hit it kind of in the prime of the market in 2005. Yeah. Well, I mean, 05 was an awesome year and 06 should have been really yeah. good for you. Uh, but, but then the world came to a stop in 07, 08. I mean, uh, that's, am- first of all, it's amazing that out of the gate, out of the gate, you, you, even as a, as a school teacher, you saw this like a business. You hired a buyer's agent, you hired an assistant. What, what why? I mean, that's so, people typically don't do that. What was, what was in you, Chantel, that you said, well, listen, I'm going to start a real company here. Uh, well, first of all, you know, I'm r- really big on figuring out what you love doing mm-hmm. and then get really great at that. You know, I always say like Tiger Woods probably wasn't great at math, but he didn't care. He just said, hey, I'm going to just really do what I'm great at, and that's golf. And I'm not going to spend more time learning math. I'm going to really perfect my golf game. And that's why he is where he is. And so, you know, I think that trying to figure out what is your strength and really focus on that and everything that you don't like to do to delegate out. And that's really what I did is that any part of it that I didn't like to do, I was like, this administrative stuff is for the birds. We're going to go ahead and delegate that out. And so I hired an assistant right away. I hated working with buyers. I got rid of that right away. And soon I didn't like working with sellers anymore. And so I just kind of figured out what I was good at and really expanded on that. Yeah, you know, look, I mean, there's a great book about, you know, that, that talks about, it's called Strengths Finder. I don't know if you've read that, but it's all about, you know, yes, I yeah, have. play to your strengths and outsource your weaknesses. So, so what are your strengths? I mean, so you, I mean, it, it, here's, it's kind of amazing, right? So you're a school teacher. Now, most school teachers mm-hmm. are, you know, very good with people and, you know, they love people. You, on the other hand, <laughs> maybe you don't like people that much. I, I mean, what are you? <laughs> 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 well, you know what I mean. So no, I do know what you mean. Yeah. So so uh, I'm a high D. I'm a okay. high D and a very high I. So um, I actually do like being with people, and I, I like people, but I also am a very high D. Yeah. And so I like a lot of things done in a in a very fast amount of time. Yep. And so in order to do that, I had to get a lot of people you know, working on that ship. So, but I'm very good at marketing. I love marketing. I love coming up with new ideas. I'm the rainmaker. So I love to bring business in the door. And so that was my strength. I love to get the business in the door, but I didn't necessarily like to work the business once I got it in the door. Mm. And so I figured out, Hey, let me hire other people that can work the business while I just, my whole focus was on doing whatever I could to get business in the door. And I started out doing things like I started something called Virginia beach speed networking where it was like a networking meeting that I had probably at one time of over a hundred people that met once a week. We, there was a place here locally called beach board and they had this huge training room and they let us use that for free and we'd bring in food and this and that. And we did it from 12 to one and we did kind of like speed dating where you'd like, you know, met with one person for like two minutes and kind of introduced yourself. And, you know, I kind of organized that and got that going um, that was one thing that I did one in the a long time ago to kind of get business right away. Um, but then I really got into doing more kind of traditional marketing where we did TV and radio and um, email and Google AdWords and billboards and just different things to figure out, hey, what is working for me and what's not working. And that's what I love. That's what I love is bringing business in the door. Got it. Okay. Yeah. You know. So. So. I, I'm the same way. So. In terms of the, my disc profile, I'm. I'm 99 D, 99 I, <laughs> right, and like 34 S and 34 C. But you know, with that kind and of. And I'm zero. Let me tell you this. I'm zero S. Like I have no S in me at all. Wow. So. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the right person to come to if you, you know, you, you you want someone to whine and cry on my shoulder. I'm not very sympathetic. The only time I'm very sympathetic is if something happens to your child. Right. Now, if something happens to your child, I will sit down and bawl my eyes out with you. But other than that, I'm not very sympathetic. How funny! You're a huntress. You like you, and that's what you do, right? You hunt for business. So, so that's that, right. So, so look. So, that, I think that's a brilliant idea. That speed networking idea. I mean, it's the first time I've heard it on the show. Um, you know, it's and I think it's brilliant because when you organize something, you become the hub, right? And everybody's going to go right. to Chantel. So, so 
Going from that to then getting into very traditional marketing. Now, you mentioned a ton of stuff. You mentioned radio, TV, you know, uh, Google pay-per-click. What is the next thing that you, that, you, that you tried out in terms of traditional marketing? The first thing I did try out was radio, and radio really has worked well for me. Um, TV has not worked well for me. Um, it's good for it's great for branding and you know it just doesn't bring in it's so expensive and just doesn't bring the return like i've needed it to and i've really gotten to a place where one of the things that i think is really important for people is to really hone in and we ask people three different times how did they hear about us so when they first call in we have an inside sales department that takes that call and we ask how did you hear about us then we have a client information sheet that they fill out and we ask how did you hear about us and then in our final survey we say, how did you hear about us? And so we do a really good job of going, hey, we're spending X amount of dollars. I mean, I'm doing it actually, you know, an hour before you called. I sat down and I said, okay, where are we year to date? How much money have we spent from January 1 on Zillow? How much have we spent on Billboard? How much have we spent on this, XX? And how much have we brought back in? And not only how much have we brought back in, but if you, if you kind of look at it like this, we, we target to sellers. Our number one goal is to target to sellers because if I spend $1,000 on radio and it only brings me $3,000 in return, then if you think about it, if once I pay, let's just say 50% I give out to my, one of my agents, now we're at $1,500, right? Yep. So that means that I've only made $500 on that. Mm. Then you got to talk about the cost of the sale and how much did it cost me. Hey, did was that really profitable for me? Yes or no? And so that's what I do is I really look at how much I've spent, how much has it brought back in, and then... The other good part is if it brings in a listing, then the good thing is is hopefully every listing you have, you'll produce at least what we say is a half of a buyer because it's not really realistic to get an entire buyer out of it, but our numbers kind of show that every listing we have, we at least get half of a buyer out of it. So then it's like one and a half times of a sale is kind of how we look at it, and we really look was this profitable? Because I think a lot of times people spend money, spend money, and then they don't actually calculate, hey, did this, was this worth it? Or did we just break even? Right. 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 That's interesting, Chantel. It's interesting that like for the radio, for example, uh, I know you spend a lot more than a, a thousand bucks, but you know, uh, it, the mm-hmm. way, and I just want to say this over again for the audience, right? So most people, if they spend a thousand dollars on, on some sort of channel, marketing channel, and they get $3,000 back, they're going to go, well, I got a three X return out of that. Now you don't because you're calculating your actual cash on cash return. You say, well, we got 3000. Right. I paid 1500 out to an agent. I have 1500 left over, but it, my cost was a thousand. And I, but I only netted right. 500. That's very interesting that you think of it that way. Again, so, so your background is as a, a school teacher. I'm actually a math major. I'm actually a math major. So everything with me is all about the numbers. And it's so funny because, you know, we're, we're now spending about $70,000 a month on marketing and wow. advertising. And so I can't tell you the amount of phone calls and people that, that come to my door that want to do ad, us to do advertising with them. And I look at them every time and I say, listen, I'm a numbers girl, okay? The numbers have to work out. If I'm spending X amount, here's how I look at it, whether it's, you know, we're going to do it or not. And a lot of times we do things on a um, per lead basis. So if they're, let's say, let's say there's a magazine that wants me to do ads with them. I say, okay, well, here's what we're going to do. We will. We'll do it on a cost per lead basis, meaning we're going to put your phone number and we're going to put a separate kind of web address so that we know when a lead comes in from you and we record all of our calls so we can see, hey, was this call, was this profitable or not? And so we're actually only paying, a hundred. we'll pay usually about $125 for a lead. And so... It sounds like a lot, but if we've only gotten five leads, instead of us paying $10,000 for a, for a 
spot in a magazine were only paying for the actual leads that came yeah. in that were longer than um, a minute or two minutes on a recorded call. So that that's worked out well for us on, on some things to get people to do you know, a cost per lead kind of yeah. marketing okay. I mean, you're, technique. You're, yeah, you're paying for performance. Um, I think yes, I, yeah, pay. that's exactly what we call it. We call it pay for pay for performance advertising, and it's win win for us because we're like, hey, we're not going to stick our neck out if this isn't actually going to work. And you know, you have every person that's walking through the door that's saying, oh, I know this is going to work. I know this is right, going to work. Right. So that really does work for us. So you being in, um, so this is, again, you're, this is pretty fascinating. I mean, I, I, I do want to ask this, Chantel. So I know you're a math major, but you can, you mm-hmm. know, you, you can be a math nerd all you want, but you're, you're a business girl. I mean, where did you learn, get yes. your business chops? Well, you know, the thing that I always tell people is that I spend a, a huge amount of my time pouring into myself. Um, there is not a day that goes by that I'm not reading a book or, and I don't like to read, so I read very little. I'll probably read like maybe three pages of a book. Um, but I use audible.com. Yep. I listen to like the Entree Leadership podcast. Yep. But I'm constantly pouring back into myself and just learning from, from other people. And that's, that's really where I've got it from. And there truly is not a day that goes by that I don't listen to at least a 15 minute podcast on leadership. And that's my job is to, if I want to grow as a leader, I've got to pour into myself and, you know, it's crucial. I, I, yeah, I mean that. I, look, um, so first of all, I, I listen to Dave that Dave Ramsey thing too. Um, my show's mm-hmm. better, so you should start listening to my show. But yes, <clears throat> but I do need to. You should. Uh, but uh, okay, so you you grow as le- and I had Dave Jenks on the show. Now J- Dave Jenks, I don't know if you know that name, but he co-wrote the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book with Gary Keller and Jay Papasan, mm-hmm. and that's that's exactly what he said. He said, "Listen, if you want to win, if you want to grow, you need to be learning based. Everything you do is about learning." But so. I bring that up to say this. Information for a lot of people is an opiate. They listen to a, 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 a podcast. They go read a book, and, and they, they, they want to do more, and, but they don't take action. You, again, right. have, have this brilliant blend of growing you know, action, growing action, growing action. Is that, is that just innate in you, Chantel? Well, you know, it's actually, it's one of my biggest strengths, but it's actually one of my biggest weaknesses because I – I am such a mover and a shaker. I can make things happen so quickly. Um, and if you want to know my strongest weakness is that I make things happen so quickly mm. because I don't think through it. And I'm like, okay, well, oh, that sounds like a great idea. I just heard it on a podcast. We're now going to implement it. Right. And as I've grown into the size business that we are, I cannot do that anymore. It worked when I was, when I was smaller. I could make these changes. But now, because we are you know, a lot larger, I have to actually stop and really think about, okay, if I make this change, what, what is negatively going to impact? And when you have 51 agents, you have to, you have to really have great communication on being able to go, Hey, I'm, I'm not going to just make this change in my head. I'm going to put steps in place to make that change actually happen and not just happen, but happen smoothly. And so that everyone's on board and everybody has kind of caught that vision. And, and truthfully for me, my biggest thing is I, we have a system for a system for a system. Hmm. I mean, everything in my business, we say, okay, how do we make this system easy enough for us? a 17 year old and a 70 year old. Cause if you think about like Chick-fil-A and you know, Outback, they make every system they have easy enough for a 17 year old or a 70 year old. And that's my goal is to try to make everything we have as simple enough that the process is easy for people. Interesting. I, and I want to get into that a little bit, but I, I, I want to, so what you said earlier was you said, you know, you're, you're very quick, right? So you're very, and look, speed, mm-hmm. s- success loves speed, but you said mm-hmm. you, you have to pull back and, and, and you, what you really learned is to say no, because every time you say yes to something, you're saying no to something else. Um, did you, yes. did you have something that, that, that blew up or like, what, like, how did you learn that skill? You know, 
Um, there's a great book out right now with a friend of mine that's called, um, it's Rory Vaden, who is Mm. just amazing. I just love him. He's a a good friend. And he, um, wrote this book that's called procrastinate on purpose. And, you know, exactly, that's exactly what the whole book talks about is that, you know, I've gotten to the point where, you know, I don't say yes to everything. I mean, I, I, I literally have on my voicemail, if you listen to my voicemail, it says, something along the lines of, I have my assistant saying, "Yeah, hey, thanks so much for calling, but just so you know, I, I'm getting, I, I may be getting 15 calls a day for someone that wants to sell me something or something like that. If I said yes to meet every, you know, the 15 people every day that wanted to meet me uh, to sell me something or do whatever, I wouldn't be able to get anything done, right? And so when you when you explain it to people like that, they go, yeah, that is right. Instead of, oh, she's not returning my call or right. why aren't you responding to this? But you truly do have to take control of your time and make sure that every single second of your day is dollar productive activity to bringing in money and revenue to the business. Yeah, I agree. I, and, and listen, I heard your message like three times. I was on hold for a while, but um, <laughs> that's okay. No, but but I hear. But I, hear, I just wanted to bring out because you even say or your assistant says, says, "Hey, listen, Chantel will not even take your donations." So that, like it's very encompassing that message. And I it was it was interesting the first mm-hmm. time you know the first time I've ever heard that. So so in mm-hmm. terms of your system, Chantel. Um, you, you know, you have systems for systems for systems for somebody out there who wants to model you and grow this you know, ma- massive you know, business of 51 agents or, or even if they want to get to five. What are some of the systems that, that uh, you think are basic, essential to, to growing a uh, – let me let – me, let me, Well, I'll give you, I'll give okay. you an example. Okay. Uh, you know, anytime something happens more than a couple of times – so we'll just talk about donations. Okay. okay, so we literally get about three calls a day of someone wanting to donate, and it's because – we, I'm passionate about giving, and um, I believe that's one of the biggest reasons that my business has grown because, um, you know, my goal by the time I'm 54 years old is to live on 10% of my income and give 90% away. Wow. And so every year, you know, I started out giving 10%, and then I increased it by 3% every year. And so hopefully that will happen, but, you know, donations and giving is super important to us. But um, if someone wants to have an event uh, to give, what we, we have a system in place. So it's, so everyone knows when someone calls about giving, everyone knows you go to ChantelRay.com slash donations. And so it, when, when the phone call comes in, everyone's not like deer in headlights, right? It's like, oh, yes, you'd like you would like to um, have a donation or charitable giving. Um, we are very committed to serving the communities where our customers and coworkers live and work. Um, and so what we would like for you to do is fill out, go to ChantelRay.com slash donations. And, you know, as you can imagine, we receive many requests for donations. And so we have to have a system in place for this. If you'll fill out this form, and then what we do is, if it's under 250, we can make a decision now. But if it's over 250, we decide everything for that for the following year. So we don't, so we're not just, mm. you know, randomly giving to this yeah. or that. We sit down once a year and go, okay, wh- who are we going to give to for the following year? And we kind of, you know, strategically plan that out. Yeah, that's great. That is great. I get, I, you know, it's so funny. I get stuck with that kind of stuff all the time. And, and I go, oh, that's a, that, you know, that's, that's, that's something I think I can implement. I can be better at that. Um, mm-hmm. so, so, but again, here's what I was going to ask. I mean, I think that's, I, I appreciate that example in terms of building your company. There's, there's, or, or business, there's people out there who want to build a company like yours. And, and let me, let me say it this way, you know, there's a difference in my mind. There's a difference between a company and a business. Now, now business is something that you need to be involved in. You have built a company. You could, st- I, I imagine with all these systems, I imagine you could go to Europe for six months Mm-hmm. And your business yes. would still run. Yes, it would. What What are some of those early systems that are important that that somebody out there like? What would you suggest people put in place today? Yeah, for us, we've created um, all of our checklists for everything online, and so you know, a lot of times, you know, people are like. You know, it's like, well, where's this document and where's that and where's, this? you know, and nobody right. knows where this yeah. is and nowhere's that. So we've tried to make everything an online checklist where it's very easy to go through and go, okay, 
you know, here's everything for this job description is in a checklist where we know um, every job and every job description and every thing that we're requiring that job to do, you know, in the beginning, we were kind of handcuffed by our, like, transaction coordinators and our listing coordinators because it was like they knew so much. Well, now, you know, our system has made it so easy that when one person leaves, we literally could hire a temp agency if we wanted to, have them come in, and everything they need to do is documented clearly mm. and as easy as can be, and we're making every function in our job so that, you know, someone could come in and within a couple hours of training, they could be up and running. And that's the goal. Cause it's like, if you think about, if I've never worked at McDonald's, but if I went in there, I'd be able to figure it out. Cause there's a big poster up top that says, here's the bun. You put two tomatoes, you know, two pickles, a squirt of this, you know, right. trying to, and it, that's a basic analogy, but that's how I'm trying to train our entire company to go. You know, one of the things I say is if you go on vacation for a week and things are a disaster, that means that you did not do a good job Yeah. because when you leave, it needs to be where everything is perfectly running without you because everything is mapped out. Everything is lined up. And so we just really think of our, our we've run our company exactly like a franchise. That's yeah. our goal is to be the only franchise only real real estate franchise in the United States. And what what I mean by that is, you know, every time you go to Keller Williams, you know, you, you're going to get a different agent. The experience is going to be different. Right. Well, when every time you go to Outback Steakhouse, the experience is exactly the same. Right. And so we want to create a, an experience for customers that that is the same experience every time. And if you think about it, you know, I've read statistics that are say that nine out of 10 small businesses go out of business. Um, but on the other hand, only one out of every 10 franchises go out of business, which that's staggering. And, and the reason is, is because systems and procedures and having a consistent experience is what makes a company grow. Uh, yeah, I agree. I, I, that is so great. I mean, even going back to that McDonald's uh, uh, analogy uh, or illustration, I mean, at the cash register, it, there, the, I, I, I'm pretty sure there's just pictures. If you order a, 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 I don't know, a Big Mac, right? There's a picture of the Big mm -hmm. Mac. Boom. It's, it, it's, it's yes. dead simple. So in terms of, of, of ironing out or creating a, 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 a predictable or reliable experience for your customers, um, mm -hmm. and I'm on your site right now. And, and you talk about this. You say, hey, at other big companies, they call themselves franchises, but they're just brands, right? Remax right. is a brand. And, the, and a Remax uh, experience uh, in California is going to be much, much different or could be in Texas and different, yes. you know, different from – so so what what are those – what is that experience that you want to create for your customers? And, and uh, mm -hmm. maybe talk to me a little bit about that. Okay. Um, well, like number one, I mean we have a photographer that is – you know, a professional photographer to take all pictures. So that way it's like we don't have one and we've trained her in how to take the pictures and what to do and what not to do. So now we've taken that where the agents don't have to worry about that anymore. You know, it's like one piece I don't need to worry about. Yeah. Um, the virtual, you know, we always do a virtual tour on every property that we have. And just the, the marketing that we do for every single property the individual agent doesn't have to do it. So the comp our company does that for them so that all of those, you know, if you're a great salesperson, you probably are just not going to want to sit in front of the computer all day and, you know, yeah. upload to all these different sites and do this kind of social media and, you know, all these different things. It's just who has time for that or patience right. for that. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm getting it. So, so we just put on the strengths. We, we put everybody in their strengths. Right. I mean, Gary Keller talks about that, but putting everybody on the right seat on the bus, right? If somebody, yes. you know, somebody might be a great mechanic, but not a great navigator. So don't, don't, you know, use them. For, that's really interesting. So I imagine in terms of systemizing everything, you, if, if I'm one of your agents and I get a lead, I, I bring it in and I give it to Wendy and Wendy automatically puts person in database, sets them up on a drip campaign. I mean, is it that automated for your people? 
Yes, it is. And, you wow. know, one of the things that we just recently did is we – we've created an inside sales department. And these inside sales departments, um, the people that we've hired are all people who have worked in inside sales departments for very large companies like Geico Call Center, Verizon Call Center, um, you know, people who have experience with the call center environment and what to do and how to close people on the phone. And believe it or not, the different people are different, better closing on the phone and the better, different people are better closing in person, you know? And so we found people who they, they love to be on the phone all day. They, they don't mind being on the phone. They can close you on the phone. And one of the things that it's done because we used to do duty where an agent when you called in the agent themselves that was going to be the outside sales agent was also the inside sales agent. Mm. And the problem with that is, is that let's say we had a brand new agent sitting on the, on the floor um, that had only been in the business for, you know, a few months. Well, we don't want them handling an $800,000 seller that we have because they're just too new. You right. know, they, they're fine to deal with a $200,000 buyer or a $100,000 buyer, but they were getting calls. And then also our seasoned agents were just cherry picking leads. So what would happen is a senior agent would sit on the phone for duty and then, they would get in a call for an a investor that wanted to see an $80,000 property and they would just blow them off right. because they would be like, I don't know. <laughs> I got five other $400,000 listings. I'm not wasting my time with this $80,000 guy. And so that's why we implemented this call center um, where the, now we have, we've created a system where agents can, agents can see, um, you know, what they're doing as far as like the inside salesperson says, okay, this is a $400,000 seller. This person has a higher conversion rate. I'm going to give this person to you. And so we have a dashboard that shows exactly, you know, what the people's conversion is. I mean, we I've really come to a new place where I'm doing a great job of tracking all of this information of, you know, who's doing what, what is your conversion rate? Uh, you know, are you better with buyers? Are you better with sellers and so forth? Interesting. Now, so, so, um, this is very interesting, Chantel. So, uh, help me understand this, uh, in terms of that, is that, uh, self-reporting, right? So, um, meaning that me is the, like you, you have to get that data from somebody has to input that data into your computer. Is it, is there a, a, a manager person that looks at, you know, Julie, Jim, and Bob and says, okay, let me put in their metrics? Or is it Julie, Jim, and Bob self-reporting those metrics? So what will happen is that the person calls in, and then the inside sales manager gets all of their information, gets their address, their phone number, their email, their everything, and put it into our lead system that we have. And then the lead, they assign it to, let's just say, a girl named Sarah. Mm -hmm. So they'll assign it to Sarah. And then Sarah is responsible. The system will make her, once she has that lead, within 24 hours after that appointment, she's got to put in, did she get the listing? Mm. Um, you know, did she get a buyer broker on that person or not? And then she has to continually update her notes. If she doesn't update her notes on that lead, then it kicks it back out to a manager. And then a manager can go back to Sarah and say, Sarah, Hey, you know, what happened with this one? Did you do this? Did you do that? Did we get this going or, or whatever? And we have, conversion rates on every single agent on their com percentage of closed, their percentage of converted, their percentage of ratified contracts, their percentage that they listed. We gave you this many listings. How many out of those listings did you actually list? How many buyers did we give you? How many did you get under buyer broker? How many total leads did we give you? Because if we give you too many leads, right now, that's an issue too because you're just going to let some of those go because we've just drowned you in leads and you, you are going to, again, cherry pick the best ones. Chantel, man, um, again, this, this is fascinating to me. I just – how I, – I'm, I'm, look, here's what, one thing I'm always curious about when I talk with somebody like you. You are, you got to a point you – know, I mean, again, you do 900 transactions. Why weren't mm -hmm. you at 400 – why, you, why didn't you go, eh, 
I'm good. I'm happy, right? I'm putting these systems like like what 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 inside you, Chantel, makes you go, yeah, I'm, I did 900. I'm going to do a thousand or 1200. Like, w- w- how are you so competitive? <laughs> I wish I wasn't as competitive as I can, as I um, want to be, yeah. as I am. But um, the the thing is, is that we, my my biggest goal is to change the way real estate's done in our country. So it's not like it's like some little goal that I have, you right. know. I when I first when I first went and looked for a house, honest to God, this is a true story. I went. I called three different agents. Two of them never even called me back, yeah. and one of them called me back three days later. And I thought, this is ridiculous. Right. Someone has to come up with a business that's truly run like a franchise for this. And and I just believe that that's a missing link in our in in our our situation. I mean. One individual person is not able to be available 13 hours a day. It's just yep. not possible. Yep. Yeah. No, so, I mean, and I believe that the showings, I mean, think about the showings. I mean, when somebody calls on a house and they're not available right then, they're just going to move on to the next house. That's just how we are in this country now. It's like, you didn't call me back. I'm going to go on to the next yeah, one, right? For sure. For sure. <laughs> and I think, I think what, what, you know, what, what, the real estate uh, industry as a whole doesn't understand is that real estate and realtors account for something like 20% of our gross you know, GDP. You know, th- this mm-hmm. is a giant, giant business that, that, that moves our, yes. our country and, and money. And, you know, and there's, there's a lot of just jokers out there running around, you know, in the industry. There's like, uh, you know, how, there's, you know, how many people are like you? Maybe, maybe there's a handful of people, and I, I know I know a few people. I don't want to say their names, but there's a few people that have the same mission. And for all I know, you guys are in cahoots. But so, <laughs> so, um, so going back to your marketing budget, right? You are this master marketer, this wizard. You spend seventy grand a month. Uh, what is the for for people out there? And they, you know, they 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 know they need to do marketing. What is uh, in terms of a budget, like what percentage of your mm-hmm. income, your, your GCI, is acceptable for a, a marketing budget? Um, you know, for us, I think we're we're probably spending um, somewhere around twenty to twenty twenty five percent of our budget, um, which is is a huge amount. <laughs> you know, it's a really big amount that we spend on marketing because we the. I don't like cold calling. Like, you know, a lot of times people say to me, oh, my gosh, you could sell ice to an Eskimo. And it's like, no, I can't. I'm not a real great, like, I'm not this, like, great, great salesperson that's just going to, you know, talk you down. And I can't do door knocking and door to door and cold calling. That's that's not who I am. Mm. And so I was like, how can I create a business where we can do marketing to bring leads in without me having to do that. Yeah. And so we, what we tell our agents is 80% of your business is going to come from us and 20% of your business is going to come from referrals and people just knowing um, that you're in the business. So we do want our agents doing some like, you know, asking their friends, do you know anyone that, is looking to buy or sell, but we also don't want to hound people. Like that's not my thing either. Like I don't, I don't want my, my friends coming to me every day going, who do you know that wants to buy or sell? Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, so, but, but that doesn't mean that they can't know that I'm in real, you know, that our agents are in real estate, that they are involved, that they can give their cards out. And in a non obnoxious way, kind of asking for business a little bit. And just because that, they know they're in real estate. They're going to naturally get referrals and just giving such great customer service that people, you know, want to give referrals to us. Right. 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 So, you know, you being a numbers person, you track everything and, you know, this paid for, for performance with, with much of your marketing. I'm surprised you, you said you have a billboard. Why do you have a billboard? You can't track that. It's out there. I mean, you don't, you know, why do you have that? Well, And the thing is, is billboard and TV are the two things. And people actually do say billboard. So, like, Mm. when we say, how did you hear about us? They they do say billboard. That is a way that people do do it. Um, But it is about just top of mind awareness. Um, And so, like, for example, if I said to you, 
what insurance company do you think of when I first say insurance? What do you think? In 15 minutes or less, you can save hundreds at Geico. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's like, I mean, I think if you asked almost anybody, like, you know, if you just went, name an insurance company, they'd be like, Geico. Yeah. You know, I mean, you just can't not because of the amount of, of marketing and advertising they do, and it becomes top of mind. And so, you know, it's funny because there's – People, we have our our jingle has been a really big hit um, because we have people. It was funny. I had a guy who came to me. And he's like, "You're not going to believe this, but your commercial must have been on right before I was teaching a class because two different people had walked in the class. They're like, if it has to sell, call Chantel, and they were like humming it, and you know I, they didn't know that I knew you, but that's kind of the power of branding and the power of marketing is that you want people when they think, and, and you know, we're now coming into a down economy a little bit now. Hmm. Um, things have been slowing down, and that is actually really good for us because that's when the, the cream, the people who are the best, that's when they actually come to the top because people are like, man, things are kind of slowing down. I better not just use Susie Sally, my friend, who's kind of nurse by day and realtor by night. Yeah. You know, I better kind of go to the best. Yeah, and that's part of your message. I mean, I, I heard it. Uh, I heard it on your um, on your voicemail, or not your voicemail. Your yeah. When I was when I was on hold, <laughs> you said, "Hey, not everybody yeah. has thirty six thousand dollars to mark your house." You know, Chantel does. Mm-hmm. Um, that is int- so. So, out of all your stuff, again, I, I want I want people to walk away from this and not just go, "Chantel is really cool and she's really smart." You know, I want them to mm-hmm. to be able to go, "Hey, I can implement that." So, we talked about mm-hmm. systems a little bit, but in terms of marketing, so you you spend twenty to twenty five percent. Okay, so let's let's use that as a model. Mm-hmm. Um, if that if that typical agent out there doing three deals a month or five deals a month. Where should they deploy their capital? Right, they, not everybody can be on radio. Not everybody can be on TV. Right. And by the way, are you are you a, you're a Wagner guy, person, lady? No, I'm actually not. I had worked with him for a little while, but mm. I'm not now. Yeah. Okay. Um. Um. Because by the way, well, that's this is that's one of the things that I do. But where where should people mm-hmm. put money? Should it be Zillow? Should it be Google Pay Per Click? Or what what kind of traditional marketing that would you suggest people go out and try? I'd say if you have a smaller budget, um, that Zillow would be a really great one. Realtor.com is also a pretty good one. And then figure out a small niche that you can really create for yourself. So for me, if I really had a small budget, what I would do is go, you know, like if you really know a lot about condos, you know, then I would make yourself as an expert in that kind of arena Mm. and so that people think of you as the expert like you know say that you're the condo king or the condo queen and then market two condos um, in a specific area and then everything that you do it's kind of like you know people I'm going to this big physician's gala this this Saturday and you know the doctors that make the most money are the doctors that are not a general practitioner. Right. They're the doctors who are, you know, a specialist in ear, nose, and throat, yep. and they, they have a very small niche, and then they, they really make people make it known, hey, I am the king of this niche. Yep. And so that's, that's my suggestion to people is figure out what your niche is, and then, and then if it's to that, if, let's just say you're, you want to be the condo queen, then, you know, Put a little hat on, you know, put a little tiara on or whatever right. and take a picture and then figure out a, a square footage of tiara, I mean, of uh, condos that you want to market to and then, you know, write blogs about that, right. and, you know, write blogs about this and put that on Facebook and on social media and then make yourself as the expert in that arena. I love that. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So if you want to be the condo queen, you know, write blogs, uh, you know, even, uh, you know, do webinars and you can, you know, do Facebook ads and pr- yeah. promote your webinar, just, you know, yeah. educating people about that thing. Uh, you know, and it could be yeah. condos, it could be waterfront property, it could be ranches, whatever. That is, that's a, that's a great piece of advice. Well, listen, Chantel, we have to start wrapping up. Um, I'm going to ask you a question just because you're, you're kind of a fascinating character um, that, I, uh, that I rarely ask. And it's going to be kind of a wacky one, but it says, it's, mm-hmm. you know, what's something that I, I, I didn't ask you, but I should have asked you? Hmm. 
Um, I don't know. I think the most interesting thing that, you know, people find fascinating is my husband is actually a, a owns a real estate company. And so we, we don't work together at all. And what? so he's, That's he's one of my, yes, he's one of my biggest competitors. And so dinner in our family is, is pretty funny because it's like how many million are you guys selling this month and I'm you know doing this much and you know he's always trying to take my ideas and you know that sort of thing so that's kind of an interesting twist but I like to be in charge in in my business and he likes to be in charge of his and we make it work and at at, at the house we have the same thing like I'm in charge of certain things and he's in charge of certain things and he's a very high D and so that's kind of an interesting fact that we we don't work together. We are completely separate and we're very big competitors. That is amazing. So be t- so the, the Rays in, in Virginia Beach, uh, that's where you're at, right? Virginia well, Beach. and actually my, yeah, in my last name, I, I was Chantel Ray before I got married. Oh, okay. And so I've just kept that for business. Yeah. But my married name is Chantel Ray Finch. Finch. And so my husband's name is Ryan Finch. What? Yes. I know Ryan. Yes. Ryan's been you on the do? show. Ryan's been on this show. He has? Yes. That's hysterical. And see, he didn't even mention me, did he? I don't know. It was a long time ago. I don't know. Yeah, I know, Ryan. He's a cool guy. I mean, we, we've we actually treated yes. – uh, sometimes we'll go back and forth on, on Facebook. We'll get into a conversation, then we forget. That is amazing. So you guys – I know – well, when he – from my – again, this long time ago. The last time I talked to him, he was, he was uh, just moving into his new office – and I saw yes. a picture of it, and it was kind of cool. It was right by like a river, like it was the parking lot, and then there's a yes. river. And I was, I, and we were talking. I was like, "Oh, dude, I would go fishing every day at at, at lunchtime." So, um, man, so yep. the Finches. That's my husband. You guys dominate your your town. You dominate. <laughs> oh, people have. To I don't hate. know. I appreciate that. You it, it, wow. Um, I wish I knew that. I wish I knew that when we started recording. Uh, dang it! Well, listen. So, so here, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. I always ask the same questions. Uh, of, of mm-hmm. um, so, I'm uh, I'm an aspiring agent. I have 25 bucks. What book should okay. I go buy today? You're a big reader. What What, what should people um, read? You know, there's there's two books that I I really like. One of them is um, called Double Double. Mm. Um, have you heard of that book? Never. Okay, um, it's by uh, Cameron Harold, and he just talks about basically how to double the size of your company in three years and uh, just increase your profit, and so that one is a really good one that I like. And then um, another book that I really love, it's actually a Christian book, and it's called, um, Whis- it's called um, Whisper from God. Um, and it's by Bill Hybels, and it's just, um, it's called the, it's actually called the Power of a Whisper, and it's talking about hearing from God and having the res- the the guts to respond. And so it's like God doesn't talk to me in like a loud, audible way, but He does whisper to me on certain things. And so it just kind of talks about you know how you can you know figure out, hey, should I do this or should I not do this, and you know, we all have a lot of decisions to make on a, a regular basis. And so for me, I've got to, you know, kind of humble myself and kind of go before God and go, hey, God, do you want me to do this? Should I not do this? And, you know, as I just get older, I try to, you know, really kind of go to God for a lot more. A lot of times we want to go to everyone else and get advice. Yeah. But um, Almighty God is the way, <laughs> is the best way to go, in my opinion. That's that's um, that's very very interesting. So so do you do you when you when you you know uh, when you have a decision to make do you do you kind of go by your gut? I mean I know you're a numbers girl, but I mean do you, do you make a lot of <laughs> gut calls? No, actually I tell people that it's kind of like a buoy. It's like a a boat in and buoys. And I would say there's there's a couple different buoys that you have, and one of them is the peace of God. Like, do I have a peace about doing this, or am I like really anxious about it? But that's yeah. just one. Yeah. And then another one would be godly advice. So I really go to people and I go, Hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? Do you think this is a good idea? Um, another one would just be the Bible. You know, like what does the Bible say about this? Like, if I, if I wanted to get a job at Hooters. I think the Bible would probably be like, "Hey, that's not the best choice for you to for you to do." And then number four would just be doors opening up and doors closing. Like, 
you know, if every time I go through this door, is it is the doors opening or is every time I go through, it just seems like things are shutting in my face. But it's not just one of those. It's all of them is, do I have a piece about it? Mm. What do godly people telling me about it? What does the Bible say about this? Um, and are doors opening up or doors closing? And so it's not just one of those. Sold. I love that. I'm going to go get that book. I mean, and look, for everybody out there, <laughs> if you haven't read Double Double, if you haven't read this Whisper book, you can get a free copy using our link on Audible, audibletrial.com slash superagentslive. So use that and, and, and go go listen to one of those books. Um, if I, I, you, again, you're high D, high I, zero S. You have, you're not sympathetic. Um, <laughs> I wonder what – do you, do you, you have kids, right, from my recollection? Yes, yeah. I do. I have a three-year-old and a 12-year-old. Oh, that's right. Okay, but you are sympathetic towards kids. Okay, but just yes, not people. Yes, I am. Well, yes. <laughs> do, you, do you have a do you have a personal habit, uh, Chantel, that you think is, is contributed to your success? Yeah, um, there's two actually, and one is every single morning um, I wake up and I go to the gym every morning at 7 a.m. It's like a ritual. It doesn't matter if I don't feel good. It doesn't matter if I'm sick. I like I literally just crawl out of bed and do it every day because I'm so in the habit of doing it. And the second um, one is reading the Bible and reading some sort of leadership every day. So <laughs> spending like having like a 15 minutes where I'm just dedicated to reading the Bible, spending time in the Word, and then also spending time reading, um, you know, a leadership book. And one of the things my mom always said to me is that she said, you know, it's, it's like a piano. Like, we can get out of tune very easily, and every day we need to kind of get back in tune. And the way that you do that is by reading the Bible and reading books that are going to truly help you grow. Yeah, I love it. Your mom's a smart lady. And I'll tell you, working out, you, you, I'll tell you something that I'm starting to implement, and I, and I got this from Anthony Robbins, is he has, mm-hmm. this, he has this cryo machine. So every morning mm-hmm. in the morning, first thing, uh, well, he doesn't do it every morning, but he jumps to this cryo mm-hmm. machine that takes your body temperature to, to uh, this sounds crazy, but negative like 228 degrees. And, he, and, and he's like, mm-hmm. it's amazing. So I'm trying to do a, uh, I have a pool and it's cold. So I'm trying to do a, uh, like a morning, like, you know, 60 degree water plunge. Anyhow. Hey, wow. Chantel, it's been an amazing 50 minutes. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I know that you're growing. Thanks so much for having me. Sure. And again, I know that you're growing. I know that you just opened up a new office, and I know that you're always looking for talent. So somebody listening to this that wants to come and work for you, where can people find you? And, 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 and if, they, if they're not in your area, where can people just say thanks for coming on the show? Um, they can go to ChantelRay.com. Um, or if they want to send me an email, they can send me an email to Chantel at ChantelRay.com. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Hey, Chantel, go get them. Keep up the good work. I want to talk to you next year when you're doing 1,500 transactions. That sounds good to me. All right. See ya. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Let's go. Yeah. 